What is going on guys, it's Dwarf here. Welcome back to another episode of the new PS4 Jailbreak tutorial series for the 9.00 Jailbreak on the PS4. If you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, check them out. There's a playlist link down in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So in this video, I kind of have three titles for this video. One of them was how to make backup copies of your PS4 games. The other one was how to turn your retail games into fake package games. And the other title was basically how to take your disc games and run them from the hard drive without requiring the disc. So that's essentially what we're covering here in this video. So first of all, we've got two games here. There's Red Dead Redemption 2, which is currently on version 1.29. And then we have Days Gone on version 1.80. So these are both retail games. As you can see, they require the disc in order to run. Now you can do this with digital games that you've purchased through the store as well, as long as you can still run them on your PS4 then you'll be able to dump them and turn them into a fake package version, which you can reinstall back onto the game and run without the original license file for the game. And obviously, if you have a disc game, then when you dump it and you recompile it back into a fake package version and reinstall it onto the PS4, you'll be able to run that version without needing the disc to be in the console. So that's handy as well. And it's just good to have a backup copy of your games in case you ever, you know, lose the disc or the disc gets damaged or you lose access to your digital content you lose access to the license file then you'll still have that backup copy that's a fake package version that you can run using like the gold hen payload or mira payloads on your ps4 so yeah let's get into this so the, the way we do this is we need to dump the game we dump the game to a you know usb storage device like an external hard drive or usb drive and then that also decrypts the game as it's dumping it and then we can recompile that back into a fake package version and reinstall it back onto the PS4. And that is essentially how we, you know, create backups and, and run backups on our PS4. So, so in order to do this, we'll switch on over to the computer. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself a USB drive. As you can see, I've got one right here. Make sure it's formatted in XFAT format. So right click on the drive, go to properties and just make sure it says the file system is XFAT. If it's anything else, you'll have to back up any data on it and reformat it by right clicking, going to format and then selecting XFAT as the file system and clicking start to reformat the drive and eject the drive and plug it into our PS4. OK, so we're back on the PS4. Obviously, make sure you've ran the jailbreak before, you know, plugging the USB drive in and all of that kind of stuff. So make sure you've ran the gold hen payload on your exploit host and that you're running uh, gold hen right here so that you have your ps4 jailbroken if you don't know how to do that check the playlist link down in the description it includes a full tutorial showing you how to jailbreak the ps4 from start to finish so once you have the ps4 jailbroken and it's all up and running we're then going to run red dead redemption 2 or whatever the game is that you're wanting to dump we're going to run that here and you want to let it get into the main menu because you don't want to dump the game while it's doing stuff so you don't want to dump the game while it's loading um, or while you're actually playing the game and it's streaming in assets and stuff, that's not going to go well. So we just want to have it in an area. We want the game in a state where it's not really doing anything. So in the main menu or the start screen, that's where you want to leave the game when you're going to be dumping it. So we'll leave Red Dead Redemption 2 right here. And again, we're on version 1.29. So we will be dumping the game plus the update for the game as well. So the next thing we're going to do is prevent an issue that can basically cause the dumper to get stuck while it's trying to dump the game, it gets stuck saying, you know, waiting for application to copy or something to that effect. And that doesn't happen all the time with every game, but it can happen. So I'm just going to show you how to fix that issue so that that does not happen in any case. So we're going to go into the settings menu. We're going to go into the gold hen settings and enable the FTP server. You can see the IP address of my PS4 is showing up there in the notification. So then if we switch back on over to our computer, and run an FTP client like FileZilla. All the download links for everything I use in this video will be in the description. So we then just type in our PS4's IP address into the host box. And we type in 2121 as the port number and connect. That connects us to our PS4's hard drive. From here, we're gonna go into system data, play go. And then we're gonna go to the title ID of the game, which for Red Dead Redemption 2 is 08519 for my version you can actually find it on the disc itself 
or on the spine of the cover of the game. If you have a physical copy, that's how you can find the CUSA. It will literally be printed on the bottom of the spine of the PS4 case, um, or it will be printed on the disc somewhere. So you'll find it there. Um, if you have a digital copy, you'll just have to, um, I don't know, you'll just have to look up online your version of the game on maybe orbispatches.com and uh, find all the different title ID versions of that game and then see if you can find that matching version in this list. So if we go in here, you can see we have this file called bdcopy.pbm. That's the file you want to delete. Once you're running the game, make sure you're already running the game, then delete that file. And then that should stop any issues with dumping the game where the dumper can get stuck. So once you've done that, we can then run the dumper. So if we go onto the internet browser, we go back on our exploit page, whichever one you're using. So caro218.ir or nightkinghost.com or Al Azov's host or any of the other popular ones. And then we can go ahead and run the dumper game, which may be called something different depending on what host you're using. It might be called app dumper or game dumper or game dump or just dumper or something like that. So that's the payload that you want to run. So we're going to run this payload and wait for it to start dumping. And again, depending on the exploit host that you're using, you might have to go into the gold hen settings and enable the bin loader server before running the dumper. Most exploit hosts shouldn't require that step, but some of them do. But as you can see there, it is now starting to dump the game 08519 to USB 0. And I can see the little hard drive activity LED flashing on my external hard drive. So I can see that it is indeed writing data to the drive right now. So it will shut down the PS4 once it's finished. And that is just so that you know that it has actually finished because otherwise it's easy to miss the notification that tells you once it's done, especially when you're dumping a huge game where it can take, you know, maybe half an hour or longer to dump. So basically, once that happens, you can unplug your USB drive and plug it back into the computer. So switching back over to the computer here, as you can see, we have the dump right here. So you've got this file that just says dot complete. It's an empty file just to tell you, uh, you know, if you unplugged it too early, then it will say dot dumping, which means it was you unplugged it while it was still dumping the game. So the files are not complete. But if it says dot complete right here, then that means it has successfully finished dumping all the files. So we should be good. So we've got a dump of the game itself and of the game update that was installed as well, 1.29 in this case. So all we need to do is compile these back into packages, fake packages this time, and install them back on the PS4. So there's a few programs we're going to need. You're going to need the PS4 fake package tools. These are the kind of updated fake package tools by CYB1K and uh, also a hex editor of some kind and FileZilla or some FTP client. Again, everything will be linked in the video description. So basically the first thing we're going to do is run the gengp 4 appexe uh, So we're going to open this program and then we're going to go into the app folder with our game dump in here, copy the file path to the dash app folder and then paste it up here in the file path and then click generate gp4 which will generate a gp4 file right there then click save gp4 and just save it in the same location as your uh, dumped game so right there we'll just go ahead and put that on the root of the usb and then close it and then we want to do the same thing with the game update as well except with the game update you're going to run the underscore patch version so gen gp4 underscore patch.exe and then again we're going to do the same thing we did with the app but we're going to do it with the patch so we're going to open the patch we're going to copy the file path paste it into the file path up here and generate the gp4 file and then save that gp4 file into the root of the usb drive so you should have the gp4 files in the same location as your folders with your game dump in there and your patch dump there's an issue that can happen where if you have any encrypted trophies in your game dumps then when you rebuild them into fake package files and try and run them on the PS4, you'll get an NP error, some kind of error that says NP dash something, and it will not let you start the game. And that is due to an encrypted trophies issue. So you just need to make sure that the game and the patch dump don't have any encrypted trophies in them. So to test that, what we're going to do is go into the app dump, go into the SCE system folder, and then go into the trophy folder, 
And if you have a trophy file in here, like trophy00.trp, we're just going to open that up in a hex editor. So we're going to run hxd. Again, link is in the description. We're going to drag this in. And because we can see the, f the file names in here, uh, all of these files, this means it's not encrypted because there's readable text in here. If there's readable text in here, like this, icon0.png, all this stuff, um, that means it is not an encrypted trophy. So we don't have to worry about an encrypted trophy on the game dump. But it is quite common for the patch dumps these days to have encrypted trophies in them. So if we go into the patch dump and we go into SCE system, trophy folder. Again, we have a trophy file right here, trophy00.trp. So once again, we're going to open this trophy up in a hex editor. And as you can see, this one is encrypted. You, you can see there's no readable text in here. This is all just kind of garbled data. So this is all encrypted. So that is a problem. If we try to recompile this into a fake package update and install it to the game, we're not going to be able to run the game. We're going to get that NP error because of encrypted trophies. So what we need to do is get the decrypted version of the trophy and replace this encrypted version with the decrypted version. Now you can get the decrypted version again using FTP. So if we just go back on FileZilla right here, if we refresh, reconnect back to our PS4, I'll just go back to the root directory right here on our hard drive. And essentially we need to go into the user folder. Then we need to go down into the trophy folder and then the config folder. And then these are kind of like title IDs for the trophies, basically. So how do I know what which ID is the right ID? Well, all I have to do is go back into my dump of the patch. If I go back into the SCE system folder, there's this file called npbind.dat. So if I open that up in a hex editor, npbind.dat right there, you can see it gives me the trophy ID right here. So you can see NPWR09412. So 09412 is the correct trophy folder. So I just need to go find 09412 here on the hard drive. And as you can see, we have a trophy.trp file right here. So all we have to do is go into that trophy folder and extract this trophy file from our hard drive to that folder right there. So now we have our decrypted version. And as you can see, if I just open these both up in a hex editor right here, there's the encrypted version we had originally. Here's the decrypted version. As you can see, we've got readable text here. All we have to do is rename this decrypted version to the same name as the original version was called. So trophy00.trp. We'll delete that file and rename the decrypted one to trophy00.trp. So there we go, that should work. The trophies should work and we shouldn't run into any error messages, any NP error messages when we turn this into a fake package file and reinstall it onto the game. So that's an extra step that you have to do uh, with encrypted trophies. So just be aware of that. Okay, so once you've confirmed that you don't have any encrypted trophies or if you do have any encrypted trophies, you've replaced them with the decrypted version from the hard drive, then you are ready to recompile these into fake package files. So to do this, we're going to go back into our fake package tools. So I'd recommend running the temp folder patcher first because this allows you to select a custom location to store temporary files because there's going to be a lot of temporary files when you're building a package file, which can be the same size as the package file that you're building. So if you're doing a 100 gigabyte package file or an 80 gigabyte package file, for example, then you need like 80 gigabytes free space on one of your drives. And if you don't specify a temporary location, it will just use your main you know, operating system drive, the C drive, to store all those temporary files in. And as you can see, I only have 25 gigabytes free on my C drive, so I don't want it to use that location. So instead, I'm gonna use this four terabyte drive I have, and I'm gonna use this location on my four terabyte drive. So I'm gonna select option three to add a custom location and paste that location in so that it will store all those temporary files on that drive instead of my C drive. So we're just going to press enter here and then that should open up our fake package generator which will store all the temporary files in the location that we specified. So now all we have to do is do file open and we're going to open our app.gp4 file and then click the build button and then select an output path. I'm going to select just the root of my USB and then build. And that's it, it's now building the package file to the USB drive. As you can see here, 
Red Dead Redemption 2. So this is the main game package file here that it's now building to the USB. So don't worry too much about these warnings that show up. They don't really matter. It's the errors that matter. So you don't want to get any errors. Otherwise, that'll stop the package from building. But warnings are fine. So you can just ignore any warnings. Okay, so that's the game package file built. So we can go ahead and close that now and do the game update. So there we go, 83 gigabytes there for Red Dead Redemption 2. So we'll do file open. This time we'll open the patch GP4 file. Now with the patch GP4 file, you might want to go into command project settings and then go to the patch tab. So in order for the patch to work, it has to actually be built using the original game package file. So you have to specify the original game package file for the patch. So basically if it adds this in by default which happens to be the right location but if it's not then obviously select your game package file right there and then click ok and then you can build the patch file again we'll just select the same location click build and there you go it starts building the 1.29 update now okay so we're basically done the update now we're doing the check integrity it can sometimes take forever to do this check integrity crap and it's not really required, so I just abort once, you know, once it gets to that step. And then if it gets stuck, just kill it in Task Manager. Just like that. And obviously you can delete your temporary files from your temporary location as well once it's done. And you should be good to go. So as you can see, we've got them now here. We've got the game update and the game. So all we have to do is reinstall those back onto the PS4 and we should be able to run them no problem. So let's give that a try. So we'll eject the drive and plug it back into the PS4. Okay, so on the PS4, what we're gonna do is obviously get rid of the game. So we're gonna remove the disc. And as you can see, when I try and start the game, obviously it's not gonna let me run it without the, the license, which is on the disc. So it cannot run it without the license. We need to delete the game because the fake package version obviously is the same title ID as the retail version, so they'll conflict with each other if we have them both installed at the same time. So what we're going to do is go on to the debug settings, go to game package installer, and there's our packages on the USB drive for the game and the update. So we'll just hit install all to install the game and the update back onto the PS4. All right, there we go. So that's the game and the update now installed. As you can see right here, no disk icon anymore since we've installed the package version. And if we go to information, you can see we are on the same version, 1.29, just like we were on with the disk copy. So we'll try and run it here, see if it works. No NP error to do with the trophies since we installed that decrypted one. And there we go. As you can see, the game is loading up here. We'll just wait to see the game version as well, the in-game version. Build 1436.26. And there we are, into the main menu. So there we go. I can use Gold Hen with the jailbreak to, you know, run this game at any point now. This is now a full game backup. And of course, I've got it on my computer. You know, I could store it on my computer's hard drive. So I could still keep using the disk version if I wanted to. And if it ever got damaged, I could swap it out for this version. Or I could just keep using this version from now on. The save files will transfer over as well. I should have mentioned that earlier, but save files will copy over because the version of the fake package tools we're using includes the original keystone file from your game dump, which basically allows the saves to work between the retail version and your fake package version. Uh, obviously, that's not the case for fake package files that you download from the internet. From ones that you actually build yourself from your own game dump, then the saves should work from your, uh, you know, your actual retail version to the dumped version. So your save files will transfer over and work. So you don't have to worry about that. I'll go ahead and add this to my backups folder. Now that I've done that, also a quick word on other games like Days Gone that work a little bit differently. So Days Gone is on version 1.80 right here. You can see it's still not very large, which is a bit strange. And that's because this uses a remastered package for the game update. So instead of having the base game with all the original files on it and then having a patch package file that updates the game with the updated files like you have with Red Dead Redemption 2. With Days Gone here, version 1.80, it's a remastered package, which basically means instead of having a separate game update file, 
the game update file is the base game as well with the update already included in one package. So it's basically just replacing the base game with this remastered package. Um, so when you dump the game with that 1.80 update installed, it's not going to have anything inside the patch folder. The patch folder will be empty, but the game folder, the dash app folder, actually contains the update in it anyway. You can also run into an issue with the remastered packages like this, where when you try and build the fake package file, you'll get an error message about it being a remastered package where it's like not recognized. So there's kind of a quick fix for that. It's probably not the best way to do it, but there is a quick fix, which is to run orbis-pub-sfo in the fake package tools and open up the param.sfo file, which you'll find in your dump folder inside SCE system. There's a file called param.sfo. If you open it, there'll be a little checkbox that says remaster or remaster package. If you uncheck that box and then save it, you may get an error message when you save uh, the param.sfo, but it should still save anyway. And then if you try and build it again a second time after doing that, it should build successfully. The only issue is that when you actually reinstall that fake package file back onto the game, it will show as version 1.00 instead of 1.80. But when you run the game, it will still be updated to 1.80. It will just show in the options that it's that it's actually on 1.00 when it actually does have the update installed. That's the only kind of issue there with those remaster packages. There's probably a better way of handling them, but I just wanted to mention that anyway because there are some games where you will run into those remastered packages instead of a normal base game package and an update package. So you need to be aware that that does happen sometimes. Some games are like that. So yeah, anyway, that's basically it. That's all the kind of main info I think you guys need to know for creating your own dumps of your games, creating your own backups that you can install and running your games without the original game disc or without the original license file. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. Again, stay tuned for future videos in the series. Check the playlist link for all the previous videos I've done so far. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.